I'm just here to tell you a little about my story. I'm not going to be inspiring you and making you feel hyped. I'm going to be speaking to you to the altar of truth that you can confront life with and it can transform your journey. Change begins with you. I'm pointing to you. Yeah. The change we're looking for begins with who? You. All right. So the story I'm going to be in about my life, it's very enormous, but I choose to start from you, with you from my NYC days. All right. So that's me. Pretty sitting there at the edge. And that young man kneeling on me ended up being my husband. So <laughs> that's the story of someone who desires change. So I was serving in Kutigi, Ninja State. How many of us know Ninja State? All right. So I served in Kutigi. And one day I woke up to a young girl always coming to my door by Kulikuli. And I'm like, excuse me, why are you always coming to my door? But you see, incidents and events of life should not leave you in a blank direction. It should make you inquisitive and draw you to inquiry. So I began to inquire, why is this girl not in school? Why is she not doing something different? Why is something transformational not happening to her? Why is she always coming early morning with Kuli Kuli to me? And that took me to the journey of inquiry. I began to ask questions. And the greatest question I asked that transformed my life during my NYC year, do you know what the question is? Who am I and what am I here for? So I asked that question and I started asking questions. I make inquiry and I was asking God, why am I here? And honestly, it drove me to establish a vocational center in that village. I got the support of almost top leading people in Ninja State. The Auditor General was a support system, the commissioner. I spoke to the then Chief Justice of the Federation who was from Kutigi, and I established a vocational center in that village. And that vocational center earned me a national and a state award. That state award gave me an automatic employment. Just like the last speaker said, I've never begged to apply. No, I've never. Because I will always ask questions about life. So please be inquisitive about life. Query life. Everything that happens, a lot of people are crying about COVID. But honestly, COVID happened for a positive thing. When I inquired about COVID, I knew that it was time for Africa to begin to look inward. How many of you believe that was why? You couldn't import anything. All borders were shut down. And some of us still left it like that. We never inquired, what can I do locally to make my people not be stranded? All right? So I left my inquiry stage. And Aminat gave me a story. And guess who was the first student in my um, vocational school? Aminat. I would chase Amina everywhere. Because she still wants to hawk the kuli kuli. Guess what? In my trying to chase Amina, I discovered she was mentally ill. And through vocational training, we could cure a bit of that because we engaged her mind and she was getting a better person. What are you doing to change your environment where you find yourself? So that took me on a journey. After a year, you know, I told you I got an automatic employment. So I was given an, authority, I was given an opportunity to sit with the SSG. That's the person that handles employment in Niger State. And I was asked, where do you want to work? Blank check. In fact, it became a point that even the governor had to say, who is that copper? And, you know, from there, after one year, you know, I told you, I'm a person of inquiry. I'm always asking questions. And then I moved on and I came into my career days. Let's go back to the career days. Let me tell them a little story about my career days. So I moved to Lagos. Of course, you know Lagos is hustle and bustle, right? Everybody wants to go, oh yeah, I go to KPMG, submit here, submit there. No, mine was not like that. One day I woke up in the morning and I was making an inquiry. And I said, what is next? 
I'm back to Lagos. I said, don't worry, visit your uncle. I visited my uncle, and my uncle said, oh, you're back. I said, yes, we've lost contact for so many years. I don't want to bore you the story of how I led back to my uncle. And he said, okay, no problem. So what do you plan to do? And I said, actually read accounting. I might like to do a bit in that area, but I'm still watching. And the next thing that happened to me, the next day, my uncle was in an office space trying to submit something in Naima. And my boss walked into that space and said, please, accountant, if you by any chance have young people who are fresh graduates and they want to work, I have a project to do with for Nigerian Polytechnics and I'm needing accountants to go and work for me. And my uncle heard the whisper and called me, come now. And I got that job. From that job, I did consulting for six years. The story I'm telling you about my career days, I'm telling you so that you can understand the tenacity and patience of your growth. People of change are not quick people. They are not microwave. They are not indomie. We are in a quick generation where you want everything to happen so sudden. No. No. Please don't. If you want to eat something that is delicious, go and check. It takes time. So understand your times and your seasons. And don't be under pressure. Don't let someone tell you, oh, I made my first millions when I was 16 years old. Life is not about making millions. Life is about making change in people's life. That's what we are here to do. We are here to transform destinies and make people become what they were created to be. And so I continued in my career days. My career days took over 11 years plus. And that 11 years plus, I transitioned. I ended my journey of career working for people at Etisalat Nigeria, a multinational company. At that point, I was already enjoying it, honestly. Because from consulting, building accounting softwares, and a lot of things, I'd already built capacity. So I could stand. In fact, in that consulting job, guess how much I earned? Less than 40,000 Naira. But I had the opportunity to speak to all and most important MDs in this country. I had the opportunity of working with people like um, the owner of Interswitch. I had opportunity in sitting in boardrooms with people like Jimovia and, Jim and Jimovia's wife because I sat down to look at that. Do you understand? So the making process is your equipping time. All right? So moving on from my career days, I heard one day in my inquiry too, it's time to resign. And I'm asking, why do you want me to resign when I'm enjoying it? It's a lot. Free airtime, 35,000 naira every month. Free medical for four children and your family. Everything was looking rosy. Is that not the time to start enjoying the labor that I've been laboring? And God, I said, no, it's time to move. So I resigned in my inquiry mode. Just like many of you. How many of us want to jack back? Don't lie, Jackba. We want to Jackba. Yes, I did. So my Jackba season, I left for US. And I got to US. I said, it's time to Jackba. This Nigeria is not normal. It's not me. It's not my father that will come and change. If my great-grandfather could not do something, it's not me. So I left my inquiry cap. I dropped it. And I went to US. That's my trip. Did you see how fresh I was looking? Mm -hmm. You see the other picture, that's when I came back home. You see how rough I was looking? Uh -huh. That's Africa for you. Know that whatever you want to bring change to takes hard work and it takes determination. That's why when you see any of us move to any land, we survive because we are different species. So I moved to US and one day I tried everything tribal to have my stay. It didn't work. And I woke up one day and I realized I dropped the most important tool in my life, which was my inquiry tool. So I went back to it, I faced reality, and I said, what will you have me do? And he said, no, you're done with this place. This is not your location. Rise up, go back to Africa, and go and economically empower women. That dropped my mandate. Mandate, purpose, is the greatest tool to give you an effective change in life. So, from my Jakba 
I return to reality and I bet Rennie Golding Mott Ventures. Now, what was Rennie Golding Mott Ventures to do? It was to change the narrative of what Africa stands for. Africa is a land that is rich with resources, built with capacity, and we had a lot of tenacious things that can transform the world. On my trip, one of my trips to Canada, I met an Indian man, and he said to me, I swear down my life, I will never leave Nigeria. And I asked him, why? Everybody wants to leave. He says, because you guys don't know what you have. Your eyes are blind. And I began to ask him questions. Guess where the man lives? He lives in Ibadan. He said, what he has gained in Nigeria. In fact, I met his children. What, the way his children were speaking, you think they're Nigerians. They were even speaking broken English. That's to tell you how long his life. He said, this one you are seeing, I gave birth to him in Nigeria. So, I, I looked inward and I began to que question myself. And Aminat resurfaced. And I heard, go and begin with Kuli Kuli. Rebrand it. Make it a snack that everybody desires to have. So I sat down. I took Kuli Kuli to laboratory. Check for aflatoxins. Check for makeup. Check for composition. I redesigned it. Worked on the taste. And I repackaged it. Those were the beginnings, my little beginnings. So I sat down, did a bit of research, and I'm still learning. Till now, till date, I'm still learning. So what I need to say to you concerning the betting of Rene Golden Motor Ventures is that design your dream to accommodate people. You are here to shine light in dark places. You're not here to just make money. No. No business school has ever taught that. No business school has ever taught that. All right? So, that is one thing I want to say to you about Rene Golden Motor Ventures. Now, to the international scene. I've seen myself stand in various places. Recently, I completed my AWE program, which is a U.S. consulate-sponsored program that gave me a reason to dream bigger and make light in dark places. Now, let me run you quickly through the thoughts that came to my mind when I began to do this. Now, these are the key things I want you to know for change. Make inquiry. Now, I will merge my making inquiry and faith together. My belief system is not outside me. My belief system is what has molded me to become what I am today. What I tell you about making inquiry is because I ask God, who is my creator, Every single step I want to take in life. And each time I take myself away from that, I fall. So my strength today, if I don't tell you about it, I have only lied to you. The greatest access and the roadmap to my strength and my success is tied to inquiry making from my faith, which is the God who created me. How many of you can use an iron without being pre-informed of what an iron should do? You can't. You just be looking at it. But somebody informed you that this is an iron. It was a manufacturer's manual. And that is what was able to help me. Every step of the way. From 29,000 to 23 million turnover. That was it. That's the beginning and the end of it. The second thing I want to tell you. Wait patiently for your process. If you want to bake. How many people bake here? I like red, red, red cake. Thank you. Now, you want to bake a cake. Ma, do you time it? Why? So if you time your red velvet to 20 minutes and you put it for five minutes and say, because I'm hungry, bring it out. What are you going to have? A messed up cake. That's why many lives are messed up. You don't wait for your process. You want to stand on the stage that God has not created for you. No. Wait for your time. There's no hurry in anything in life. So wait patiently. I did. I paid my dues, 17 years, going on and on. I don't, I don't have enough time out of taking you through it. Training and capacity building, a lot of mediocres exist in Africa. I have had people walk up to me and say, excuse me, kuli kuli no toy. what's this nonsense? Excuse me, who says it should not? I just finished eating a bar of chocolate. It was ground nut inside. Because it was packaged from another place and it was, but do you know how much the process they put into it? 
So that change that we are talking about needs you to build capacity. Capacity of strength, capacity of tenacity, capacity of audaciousness. Be audacious. When you hold any, when people buy my product, tell them, don't hold that thing like that. Hold it with style. Take a break. The cookies is baked for five, ten minutes. Kuli Kuli takes three hours to process. It's a manual process. And yet, we have not been able to discover a machine to produce it accurately. And you are holding it like that. That is human sweat. Come on, hold that thing with, with glamour and style. I've exported it to America, to Canada, to South Africa, to different places. That is because I was audacious about it. And I want to say to you, the solution based of human capital development, the better lives we crave for are embedded in our purpose and creating opportunities right here. We are living for something greater than ourselves. Light up the world. The greatest change that can happen to Africa is the positive development of human capital. Therefore, be a voice and not an echo. Right there in your family, in your community, with your friends, in your religious institution, and anywhere you find yourself, you, and you, and you, and you, my cake baker, all of you, be part of the solution process. Be the change you want to see in Africa. Let's light up the world.